point here. Okay. Let's say we're graphing y equals x squared, because that's real easy to calculate for the values, right? So I'm setting up my graph. Now, all you've seen me do on these basic graphs in setting up the x-axis is I said, well, okay, here's zero, or maybe I have the y-axis. I put two here, I put negative two here, I put negative one here, I put negative one here, halfway between zero and negative two, halfway between zero and two, and then I put one half here. That's all I do. That's all you've seen me do. Now, if you wanted to put smaller marks, that's okay. All right? But you want to at least have this, and you don't need to go past 2 or negative 2. Because all these are evaluated between negative 2 and 2. Now, on other graphs where I have you relabel the graphs, and now the x scale goes from A to B plus C or whatever, well, then you're going to do something different, right? And I don't see any problem with what, you, what you're doing with those. Uh, but sometimes I'll see something like this. With no numbers down here. Sometimes with, sometimes without. And I'll see something like this. And I'll see something like here. And one of the basic graphs. I'll see a point here, and I'll see a point here, and I'll see a point here. I don't think I ever saw one look exactly like that. Okay? Now that's, I, I, I see what you're doing. And as I say, it's something I can work, we can work with. It's not bad, but it's not in the standard form. First place, clearly that should be one, that should be two. You don't have a place for one half, and none of these are labeled, right? I know what you meant, and it was right, okay? But you want to make sure you put it in a form that can be recognized immediately by anybody that's seen, seen what they're seeing. Now, the other thing is you don't need all these numbers out here. So it's kind of like maybe you learn to automatically make your scales from negative 10 to 10, be fairly common, and you're still doing that, okay? Now that's appropriate if you have a function where your domain goes from negative 10 to 10 and where your range is from negative 10 to 10. And hopefully you know what domain and range are, but I'll be talking about it. Okay? So, I make the comment that the domain First of all, the domain of all basic functions is this. some of these numbers are excluded. For example, on 2 to the x, you can't evaluate 2 to the 1 half exactly, right? You can't evaluate 2 to the negative 1 half exactly. Your calculator will give you a very accurate approximation. But we're sticking with what you can do without a calculator, okay? And then when you get to use calculator at some point, you know what's going on. Okay, uh, and it fits the pattern, okay? Right now, you can estimate 2 to the 1 half, 
you know, just draw your graph and let x equal one half go to the graph and go over and see what the y value is, right? And if you do a pretty accurate graph or use one of the graphs on the uh, packet that I gave you and accurately mark off your x-axis and your y-axis, you can estimate it probably accurate to the one-tenth, one okay? And then you see what it is. You see what's going on. And when the calculator says, well, it's this, it's got many more significant figures, you say, yeah, I was close. Or, whoa, what did I do wrong? Go back and fix it, right? Okay? You do all that. Um, now, this is a set. Those are braces, a set. Braces, right? You've seen sets before, <coughs> right? Know how to do unions and intersections of sets? Well, we don't use them that much, and when we do, it's obvious, but stuff, stuff that you really should not come out of the prerequisite of course is not knowing. <coughs> uh, it's not an ideal world. Anyhow, uh, yes, that's for the whole basis of mathematics, but. Most of you aren't going to go deep enough into mathematics to have to worry about that in detail. Still, uh, I'm not sure how you solve inequalities without using unions and intersections. Uh, and we'll probably have to go over that. Okay, well, back to the topic. This is the domain. Okay, it's just these numbers because that's all you know is how to evaluate these functions at these numbers or maybe some subset of these numbers. So you're evaluating 1 over x since you got no apples. If you never get apples and you never get apples, you got no apples. You can't divide by 0. Okay? Uh, so 0 would not be in that set, right? Would not be in the, in the domain of the 1 over x function or the 1 over x squared function. Okay? We would not include negative one half or one half in the domain of the two to the x function in the strict domain that we know. Okay? Although it is in the domain of the function that you get when you draw the curve. Okay? Um, so the domain for that function would be negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. It gives you a very simple graph. Uh, the domains of most of the rest of the functions or at least the x squared and x cubed functions certainly include all these points. Okay? So do we know what domain is? At least the subset of this set that constitutes the domain of each function. And I'm going to ask you that in the homework. Okay? Uh, The domain of the 1 over x function would consist of negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 1 half, 1, and 2. And this is the basic. Okay? Uh, basic 2 to the x function would just be this because you don't know what the values are at negative 1 half and 1 half. Okay? The basic functions. Now, any of these functions can be extended with a curve, right? Okay? Now,
the main of the extended basic function consists of all values except where it's undefined. Okay? So what would the domain of all values between negative 2 and 2? Okay? And those values are represent and the y values are represented by the curve. Okay? So like what would the domain of the 1 over x function be? be all the values from negative 2 to 2? Any values where it's undefined? Okay, so what's 1 over 0? We're back to people who just spend their life hungry with apples. Hungry for apples, okay? You can't count to 1 apple by 0 apples. You always get zero apples, you never get an apple. Okay? It's undefined. So you got to get used to that. You can't have a zero in the denominator. Okay? So. minus negative 2, 0, union 0, 2. It means a set of all numbers from negative 2 up to 0. Bracket means you include negative 2. You know, you know this notation. You've seen it. Okay? Anybody hasn't seen that notation? Okay. If you haven't seen it, don't want to say, get yourself over to the Mark Center. Okay. In the library. Nice area. Good people. They'll get, it, they'll get you straight on that, because that's something I have to assume. I don't want to take time to explain it. Okay, so it's closed at this point, meaning you include negative 2. It goes up to 0, but does not include 0. We use the open parenthesis. Okay? And it's the union of this set with the set that starts just to the right of 0. It doesn't include 0, but goes right up to it. It goes all the way up to 2, including 2. Okay? That should be familiar notation. I find that in pre-calculus that's a pretty familiar notation. People use that notation in the algebra courses. So, yeah, there are things out of the course that do right. Wouldn't be here if they didn't. Okay? Plenty of things they do right. Does that make sense? Okay. What would the domain of 2 to the x be? Is there any number between negative 2 and 2 where <laughs> 2 to the x doesn't have a value? Any place where 2 to the x is not defined? You don't evaluate it at negative one half or one half because you don't know how. But there is a value. You've got a nice continuous curve, okay, which shows that there's a y value for every x value. And the x value, you go up here, you find the y value, okay? So the domain of 
two, extended two to the x. The domain is the interval all the way from negative two to two. Okay? And for many of these functions, that is a domain. Now, 1 over x squared, you still can't use 0. Okay? But for the extended function, any place the curve is defined, any x value that has a point on the curve above it is legal. It's not legal to have a point above x equals 0. It's not legal uh, for the 1 over x function. It's not legal to have a point on the y-axis. And we talked about it last time. You can't go across the y-axis, some of you did, with that function. But maybe largely because you kind of got misled on the uh, values at 1 half and negative 1 half. So. Uh, okay. Now, when we graph these basic functions, or these extended basic functions. We graph them from negative 2 to 2. We don't have all the rest of these numbers here, because if you do, you've got just a lot of blank, sp blank stuff in your graph. Okay? you got a lot of blank space in your graph that can be used to give you a curve that's easier to read. Okay? And easier to make good estimates with. Okay? So we graph only on that domain if we're doing the basic or extended basic function. Okay? Now, uh, the domain of the complete one over x function. Okay. Are there any numbers other than zero where we can't do one over x? No, there's no number where that graph doesn't have a curve. It gets really close to the x-axis because 1 over a billion is a really small number. And there are a lot of numbers past a billion, so it gets really, really close to the x-axis. It approaches the x-axis as an asymptote. Okay? And no matter how close a number is to zero, you can still get to 1 by counting by that number, right? They might not exactly be able to hit 1, like you can't count to 10 by 3's, but you kind of can. 3, 6, 9, 12, whoops, too much, okay, it's between 3 and 4, right? You can't get there with 3 3's, you can't get there with 4, so it's 3 point something, right? Or 3 and some remainder. Okay, so this can be evaluated for any x except zero. Sign isn't very good there, but that's what it is. Somebody round off the bottom a little bit. Okay. Uh, starting, okay, it goes up to zero on the left, and it goes up to negative infinity. You can't reach negative infinity, you never get there, so we don't include negative infinity, it's not a number. 
Okay? And on the right it goes from zero to infinity, but not including zero, and you can't include infinity. Because numbers are only things that you could eventually get to. Okay? Infinity is not a number. Okay? Um, so, those examples of domains. Now, what are the ranges of these functions? Well, I'm going to do the range of 1 over x squared. It's 1 fourth, 1, fourth. Okay? Because, what do you get if you evaluate it? And, and this is the basic. specific. Okay, the basic function is just evaluated at negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, 1 half, 1, and 2, right? Well, at negative 2, if you do 1 over x squared, you're going to get 1 fourth. And, you know, y'all are doing you know, fine with that, okay? And at 1, negative 1, you're going to get 1. At 2, at, at, at 1 half, you're going to get 4. Okay? At negative one half. And then you're going to get the same values. At one half you're going to get four. At one you're going to get one. And at two you're going to get one fourth, right? That's all the numbers you have. Now you can see that by the table. table looks like this. The only numbers you see over there are 1 fourth, 1, and 4. And when you write out a set, you don't repeat numbers. It's either in the set or isn't. And if it's in there twice, that's okay, but we don't list it twice. Okay? Now on the table, we have to list it twice because it appears for two different values of x, right? Okay? Uh, So what's the range of the extended one over x squared function? Which is defined on the interval negative two zero union zero two. What are the y values that you get on the graph? Well, you know what the graph looks like. At least up to negative one half. Okay draw that very well, do a better job, okay? It goes from one-fourth up to four, okay? The points that you get, so they look like this. Again, not drawn very well, okay? Now, if you're just plotting these points, the graph doesn't have to go any further than 4 up here. OK? 
okay? And when you draw the graph of just the basic 1 over x squared function, that's as far as you need to go. But, we want to ask what happens between negative one-half and one-half, okay? Well, if you divide, now, you know, one over x squared means you're dividing one by the square of some number, right? Now, if x gets smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero, what happens to x squared? Like if x is uh, one-tenth, what's x squared? One one-hundredth, yeah. You yeah, know, one-tenth times one-tenth. Okay? So if you get to one-tenth, which is, you know, like probably about here, okay, pretty close to zero, but not all that close. What's one divided by one one-hundredth? How much apple do you get each day? A hundredth of an apple. How many days does it take to get an apple? It takes a hundred days. To get a hundredth of an apple a day, it takes a hundred days to get an apple. So one over one of one-hundredth, it better be a hundred. Right? Now, you know that because of the rule multiply by the reciprocal, which I'm not going to teach you. Okay, I'm mentioning it. If you don't know that, review fractions, like pronto. Um, if you don't know how to multiply and divide fractions, we'll talk about how to add them. We'll add them with numbers, we'll get that down, and then we'll add them with symbols. So that when you get to rational functions with vertical asymptotes, you're not lost. Okay, so uh, okay, so already if we get to one tenth, we're already a hundred units high. That's only four units. Twenty-five times this high gets us through the roof. Okay. Can we get closer to zero than one tenth? So is there any limit to how high we can go? Okay, so this graph goes on like this. It's asymptotic to the y-axis, okay? On this side, well, you're squaring the same numbers, except they're negative, but squaring them gives you the same result. So the graph is going to be exactly the same on this side, or exactly reflection on this side of what you have on this side. So it's going to continue on. We can just put a couple of arrows here. It's never going to join up, because to join up, you'd have to have a point on the y-axis, which means you'd have to have a value that corresponds to x equals zero, because everywhere on the y-axis, x is zero, right? Okay? And you also, if you do the complete function, that would extend all the way from negative infinity to infinity, which makes it kind of hard to graph the whole thing. But you see that it's going to get really close to the x-axis really fast. Okay? It's going to be dividing by squares of numbers. What's a square of 10? 1 one hundredth. You get out to 10, and you're down to a y value of 1 one hundredth, which would be a hundredth of this distance, which you couldn't even write with a piece of chalk, or probably not even with a pencil, unless you had a very fine point in a big graph. Okay? That make sense? You want to make sense of this. You don't want to just follow a bunch of rules and imitate a bunch of stuff you see without understanding what you're doing. Okay. So that's the idea of domain and range, uh, except uh,
start to write down the domain because I'm not thinking about what I'm writing down. So what's the range? Where are, what, what are the possible y values if we extend this function forever? Well, can you give me a y value that's never going to occur? A negative. Any yeah, you're not going to get any negatives, are you? Because, of course, you're squaring x and then dividing that into 1. You're, it, x squared is always positive, so 1 over x squared is always positive. So the graph obviously stays above the x-axis, right? Okay, any other number. You can't get negative numbers. Any other number you can't get? Zero. You can't get 0. If 1 over x squared equals 0, you can rearrange that to say 1 equals 0. Multiply both sides by x squared, you get 1 equals 0. It can't happen. You don't necessarily have to remember what I just said, but uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Okay? So the function is what? Now the domain of the function is what? Everything from 0 and on up, but not including 0. Okay? So it's like You just look at the graph and see where the y values are. Now that could get complicated for some functions. Okay. You will have to deal with some of that. But all the functions that we deal with are based on the functions that you've already seen, the basic functions. Okay? Um, or are very closely related functions. And we can talk about x to the fourth. That's a whole lot like x squared, except the numbers get it's always positive and all that stuff. Okay? So we just do combinations of these basic types of functions. And then we look at the properties of them and learn to do the algebra. Solve equations and stuff like that. That's where we're going with this. Okay? Now, one thing I'm still not always seeing on the homework is the estimates I've asked for. So we want to talk a little bit about that. <clears throat>